Saka, as I sit here today, I'll never steal your money. If you leave your money here, you come back and meet the money. And it's because of an episode I had with my dad. We're driving to London, and everybody is like, oh, yeah, yeah, you sure? You go, you go, you go. Mm -hmm. We are going on the mountain now. Nice. Because you people have been talking plenty, we've decided that we won't even say when we are going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, after the submarine people <laughs> went to die, we've had a lot of backlash yeah, yeah. and people saying, hey, you, you hear of the submarine? How can you compare submarine to driving to London? Somebody, you know, we want to change the narrative. We always have people driving from Europe to Africa. How many Africans do you know who've driven the other way? Tell them prepare for us, you see us. One time. One well, time. I like to come back to the parenting. From what you are saying, I, 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 have, I get the sense that your parents were a, a bit liberal, liberal in their sort of parenting. They allowed you to express yourself if I'm wrong. They allowed Correct me to express myself to the best of my ability, but they kept me in check. Okay. My father didn't beat me. Let me tell you one thing that happened in my life that I think that we should all learn from. Saka, as I sit here today, I'll never steal your money. If you leave your money here, you come back and meet the money. And it's because of an episode I had with my dad. So, there was a time that we had a show at National Theatre. You know, when we are in SSS, you vacate and you want to go for these shows. And I didn't have money. But I have heard my mom saying to my dad that he had put some money somewhere for him. I think it was a Saturday or so. So, my dad went out or he went to the bathroom or something. Then I went to take some of the money. Then I went to put it under my pillow that I'll use it for the tickets. Then I went out. When I came back, I went to my room. The money wasn't there. Then my dad called me to his room. Then he said that, why did I take the money? He said, oh, I haven't taken any money. He said, he said, he said kneel down. So in my mind, my dad was going to beat me up. I was so scared. Then he sat down and he put his hand on my head and he prayed for me. Charlie, the impact that prayer had on me, me, Saka, in reality, no, 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 no. I have never been embarrassed in my life like that before. After the prayer, he took out the money and he told me that he went here, I put the money here and he went for his money. I just apologized, I got up and I went away. Then he asked me what I was going to use the money for. And I told him that I was going for this show. He said, how much is it? I said, and he said, yes, go. Next time, ask. That's all. So, I had very strict parenting but they allowed us to be. I was a very stubborn guy. You know, when I was in JSS, I was known as Notorious Panana. And you know what it means Notorious to have... Panana. Panana. <laughs> or one day, if you see Rolls Royce for town with the number plate be Panana, I don't say it be me. <laughs> that, that number, the same one for Rolls Royce. The day where I go buy my Rolls Royce. Yeah, you go put that for Panana straight. Stubborn, you see, no? stubbornness be very good. Uh, well, if you are stubborn early and you are able to control yourself or you are able to get out of it early, I think it's good. I'm going to explain to you why. So in JSS up to the mid of SSS, we were the notorious guys. Chase girls, run out of campus. If you go steal something, come we will go go sell, give you. We we when our parents no gave me till we go steal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you, you go run your father, may say, dear mama real ho cry, I say, Menama down for go on him the Korea. Nema kitchen, 
kitchen napkin. Amo ko to wala mo nire. Lately, I speak about that so much because kitchen napkin over to na hin. If you take it to TS2, these guys know that you've stolen it. So they will take it. They say they are going to sell it and come. They will waste your time and they know that by five, you want to be going back to school because of dining hall. They bought me 445, but I don't have a motherfucking price. Making what's now from bay two or even from bay one. I'm the man and they watch in the sound. But I think that it's my mother's prayer and my father's advice that changed me. Then in Achimota, I encountered Bukasa. He was my housemaster. He also had positive impact on me. And from the Toyo's Panana, I became a house prefect before I left secondary. Mm. So these three things really changed the way I saw that. After that, I began to take life a bit more serious. I was fortunate to read some books. I started harnessing the entrepreneurial spirit in me and I became more focused on making money. When I was going, when I went to tech, I had the privilege to visit tech before I went. When I went, I saw that they had a lot of photocopies there. Long story short, by the time I was going to tech, I had saved some money for my work at SNET. There was an auction in the airport residential, SMV, Scandinavian NGO. I put in a bid I wanted, so I had a photocopy in tech. Oh, wow. While I was a student, actually the way I chill. Because my parents were still giving me money. But every Friday I got um, photocopy money. And I get some small Ford Escort 284 model. Worry. So, yeah, 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 worry yeah, for yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do some. Yeah. My time for tech was a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I added a popcorn machine at report. So now I was chopping photocopy money and popcorn money. Actually, rich nigga. Diversity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some people at the, or even at sometimes at, at that stage, that's not at focus. No, no, no. You're mindset. thinking about book. You want to pass. Okay, so one thing that gave me that mindset was that, as I told you, my household got a first car when I was 18 years old. But because of my experience from Achimata School and Achimata Secondary, I had very well-to-do friends who mainly were not allowed to go out. That means because I already knew how to take trot you know, I used to visit them in cantonments, um, Osu, Kukumlimli. And visiting them was inspiring for me. I always tell them, they are, they are still my friends. Because I went into their households and I realized that kids could turn on the AC and there's no use. In my house, AC no day, there's a fan. The fans every Fan, no cows on the way. You know, the only thing that wasn't restricted in my house was food. That's how I became fat. <laughs> because I have a picture of me with a six pack and a slim, a slim fit top when I was in Motown. But once I came home and food was, you know, there's rice, there's cutting of chicken. My father liked food. Yeah. And there's always food. And I'd learned how to cook. When I left Achimata, when I'm going to the school to visit my girlfriend, I go to buy takeaway pack. And I come and do fried rice. I put a big <laughs> tie for top. <laughs> the day I told her that I've been producing that takeaway for her, she almost collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bar. They asked her, ah, but where is it? Because this one, you see, say they pack, they pack, they pack. Circus <laughs> <laughs> <Saka's> kitchen. 
<laughs> I see. <laughs> Interesting. But I mean, earlier when we were talking, you, you you kept saying you need to have more money. You need to have more money. I, is there ever an end to money making? Because I will. <laughs> you need to have more money because you know you can never have enough money. Main reason is that you don't know what's going to happen next. Your needs change, demands come, you have kids, they have to go to school. Your family wants this, they want that, they want to travel. They sit in economic car, they want business class. They, um, they play, they watch TV, I'm more hired, the BBR, but smart TV. Now you have to improve to smart TV. The car they are driving after some years begins to give them problems. You need to improve the cars. Your, every, it's just, you spend every day, electricity is gone up by how many percent? You are used to turning on your AC. We are sitting here with two ACs, 2.5, 3.0. Uh, like you were saying earlier, like your parents live a very wonderful life, but it wasn't like money filled, but it was still mm -hmm. wonderful. But they still spend money. Yeah. Look at this chicken and dinner. How many people have a carton of chicken <laughs> in their fridge? Right. Right, right, right. So, what's, what's your view on wealth? When you say somebody is wealthy, how would you describe is it? Does it have money inside? Or. Yeah, you get Bible. <laughs> I have a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, when, when it comes to wealth, I first um, look at your physical well being. A lot of us put in a lot of work to make money, but unknown to us, we neglected our health while pursuing money. And today it's come back to bite. I'm diabetic. I've been diabetic for 10 years. My mother was diabetic. My father was hypertensive. So. If I had good information, I should have started early to work against getting them. But this was me, I'm working hard, very stressful environment, making money. Like, uh, so I wouldn't have buy any trophy, no IGB. Check, check, no IGB. Especially the bachelor days. Yogurt, Muflut, Wajibi. Boys, boys, that time, now we with the feed by. Those times, my friends and I used to do contribution to buy some whiskeys called Two Keys. Do you know Two Keys? Two Keys? No. Bomb whiskey. whiskey for food, food, food. <laughs> we couldn't even afford proper whiskey. <laughs> so, guess what? As life improves, you begin to know, get money. Now you can drink black label, blue label. Then, if you get to where we have gotten to now, you move into the 23s, 21 mark. You know, Johnson. <laughs> single barrel. <laughs> you understand me? Single yeah. malt, this, yeah. blah, 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 this. Yeah. So, first for me now is your physical well being. That to be well, to, for someone who I consider to be well, you must be physically in a good shape. Then, you must be able to sustain your lifestyle comfortably. Okay. In peace. In peace. Not when you are sustaining your lifestyle based on debt and loans and every day you are running. You don't have peace of mind. So physical well-being, peace of mind, for me, is what I consider as wealth. There are people who are rich, but they are not wealthy. Because, and also, you should have a sustainable lifestyle where whatever is supporting your physical well-being and supporting your peace must be sustainable so for me I need to put in a business or businesses that will constantly bring me the income to facilitate my peace as I sit here I have kids outside marriage that's a cost 
that can disturb your peace. So if you don't put in a sustainable plan to be able to take care of those kids and the responsibility that comes with them, plus your home where you live and the responsibility that comes with it, I disturb my peace. And if I disturb my peace, my wealth is disturbed. I like that. Like so that. constantly, you should work at if you want to feel wealthy or you say you are wealthy, it's your physical well-being because if you are not physically fit, everything else is rubbish. You won't even have the peace of mind to work. Then create a channel that will sustain that peace that you are enjoying. And that channel is usually through work or through investment or through association. Some people will chop back, chop back, and then they chop past <laughs> So for me, this is more, this is wealth for me. Okay. There's this school of thought that every rich man has a level, some debt, that you have to leverage debt in order to build riches. Do you agree to that? Or do you subscribe to that? Or not? Hmm. You see, let me speak specific to Saka. I have also had it in several quarters. This is the first time in my life I'm trying to secure a loan for business. I've never done it. Rather, a few years ago, I came up with a plan where friends of mine will put together money and invest in the homes I build. If I get a contract, I invite a few friends to put together money so that we execute. Because the interest rates in our banks and sometimes even the procedure to secure the loan is quite irritating for me. So as of now, this is the first time. And now I'm going for this loan because the vision has changed. I have some big things that I want to do and they require. And even this, they, they are not loans per se. I'm looking for equity partners. So they are bringing in money so that we do it together and we share together. I'm leveraging on the brand I've built, the name I've built, the credibility I've built to invite them to bring their money so that we grow together. Mm. So, so with this, I want, to, I want to have your view on the system in Ghana and how it, it helps business. Or heads business. <laughs> yeah, like how you go fit thrive in this system, you know. Ghana as of today is very tough. If you want to make it in Ghana now, you need to put in a lot of work. I think it was much easier when we started. Now there's so much information because of our handheld devices. And as a result, there's a lot of competition. We're a small market. We're only 30 million people. There's so much you can make from us. So it requires constant thinking, constantly coming up with new, innovative ideas and pushing. But that, that brings about the question, what will give you leverage in this market? Some of us have to thrive on our relationships, the schools we attended, the fellowships we belong to, to be able to make some impact. Making it in Ghana without knowing anybody is difficult. At least, usually, you need somebody to open the door for you. Then, when you get in, you go and push. A lot of people in Ghana will only give you an opportunity if they stand to gain directly bribery, illegal commissions, stuff like that. 
if you are not willing to play ball, it's likely you won't get the business. What's your view on that? Uh, well, I have a family to feed. <laughs> I understand. I, have a life to live. <laughs> I live in Ghana. Mm -hmm. The West has a way of going about it. They say something because Lobby. something lobbyists, and we yeah. don't have lobbyists, so we deal directly with the people. And we negotiate what we can, and we, as long as it's not interest to the business or the state, and it's coming out of my profit, I'm okay. Mm. Mm. I mean, but that's, that's, that's a, a system way. that's running facilitates new entrance into the, that space. Oh yes, it does. You know, our economy is growing, buying all our challenges. Our interests are changing. Our taste is improving. So there's always opportunity. The only thing is that because a lot of us are not innovative, if Junior starts um, handyman and is striving, the next thing you know, Saka will go and start Handy workman. Handy then <laughs> G will start. Uh, maybe our handy works. Mm. So now, have you noticed everybody is a real estate developer? Everybody is developing houses. Mm. So those of us who have made it our full-time career, we have to look for a new job. <laughs> Everybody, you know, everybody sees Saka in some Mustang convertible. Um, maybe I'm, I'm in Lekomo in some double-breasted suit with some cigar and some yacht or some lounge. Yeah, the guy, real estate developer. Mm. Then no, they won't build. You know, go feel blame way. Plenty people build. They know they buy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go for blaming. Yeah, me. nobody what really they, they show you the way. Like you, you hardly get people showing you such a acquiring your firm. But about, speaking about that, can you tell us your challenges, the, the obstacles you have to go to to, to advise the young younger generation? Or because sometimes we see you here. I like, could, I community. could, I, I, I think that. Growing as a business or an entity in Ghana is very difficult because of finance. You don't get a lot of support from the banks or from the state. And that can be very frustrating because a company came into Ghana. They came with $1.5 million cash. They put 500 towards marketing and one million towards housing. And in four years, they've sold over 400 houses. The average house is about $170,000. Do the maths. Why? They had leverage, they had cash. I've been doing this business for close to 15 years. And it's now that I'm trying to raise some substantial money to do something. It's been hand to mouth, hand to mouth, hand to mouth, hand to mouth, sir. Even your bankers don't have any sense to advise you. All they want is your deposit. They want you to take an overdraft so that they get a commission, come to you with loans that you don't need at interest rates that don't work. It's not as if even your bank is thinking about how they can tailor something to meet your needs no? so you can easily be discouraged but that's why i found a way through my friends there are also other ways people can go the times require a different type of thinking when i pray i tell god to bless me with unique ideas and bless me with favor before human beings because if you have unique ideas and you are favored before men, you try. This thing that we are struggling to do, whatever it is, there's someone with information or someone with a key that can change the story. So you need favor. 
you mentioned that you were trying to, you know, be more healthy and things. So what's I'm your, overweight. So what's what's the what's the path that you've you've taken now? What, what are you? You see, for a man, for a man, mm -hmm. if you become overweight, mm -hmm. we are looking for money for what? Enjoyment. So if you become obese or you struggle with diabetes and hypertension, it affects your blood. It's like a car system. It's your heart that is pumping the blood to your penis. So if it's not working well, you can't get your erections. Every day you are looking for medicine. Then what have you achieved? So you need to stay healthy, keep training, exercise, so that you can enjoy. So apart from exercise, what are the other things that you You eat right. Person? You eat right now, yeah, for Because if you exercise, right. look, I've been working Ligon five days a week for maybe six years. Every day, seven to ten kilometers. And your boy. The only oh, yeah, time, yeah, but the, and the <laughs> only time <laughs> that I see impact is when I control my mouth and I control what I eat. Yeah, mm. 80%. 80%. That's 80%. And then the exercise the The exercise, 20, the exercise keeps you fit. You can, you have a good heart, those things. But to stay, stay trim, you need to control your mouth. I think we eat too much. That's Why do fufu <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we eat too much of the wrong things too. Yeah, so I think so. 